been here in Harrisburg for six years and the horror stories, the things that I'm looking at a room full of Harrisburgers, <laughs> the things that you guys have lived with and dealt with all of your life. And uh, I didn't know how to put it in words. I've been trying these past six years how to put it in words and God used Joyce Meyer to say it so well. I said, well, there's no need of me reinventing the wheel. Just play the tape and let her say what I believe is a word for this community. What the enemy has intended to destroy you, God shall use it. God's going to use it. So he told this couple and this family to come and tell Harrisburg that they will rebuild. They will renew. They will restore. God's not going to send some great evangelist or some preacher or somebody to town and make that happen. You may have never thought about the message being that way, but God's taking about, talking about taking the pain and the suffering that you have gone through and giving you a platform, not in a pulpit, but with your own family, with people on your job, with people at school. And when you talk about what God has done in your life, there's going to be deliverance. Because people can argue with our doctrine. There's a lot of that going on right now. There's a lot of debating about if whether the Bible is legitimate. People are debating about uh, speaking in tongues or if whether you should give tithes or free will offerings. As we've seen lately, they're debating about if whether the whether uh, homosexuality should be accepted in the church. They're, they're debating and fighting about all kinds of stuff. But you know what? And sometimes we don't want to get in the, the fights and the arguments because like, well, I don't really have all the scriptures to back up all of that stuff. And I can't really answer all these things theologically and all of that. But you know what? Can't nobody argue with your story. Can't nobody argue with what God did for you and what he's doing in your life. You can fight me on every single point. I remember the, remember the story of the man who, was, who Jesus healed that was blind. And all the religious folks got into debates about if rather it should have been done on a Sabbath day and all that. And they even questioning the guy. And he's like, look, all I know is that I was blind <laughs> and I can see. You can't fight with that. Y'all want to debate about when he did it, how he did it. I'm just glad that he did it. And I'm telling you in this room today. Don't you dare let go of God's plan and purpose for your life. It's very easy to give in to the discouragement, the feeling that nothing will ever change. And to just go ahead and just compromise with the enemy. Just go ahead and do like everybody else. And say, forget, what am, what am I holding on for? What am I believing for? Anybody ever asked that question? Where was God in all of this anyway? If God is so loving, then would he let me go through all of this for? And I agree with Sister Joyce. Lord, I don't know why. And I can't answer all the answers, give all the supply, all the answers in my head. But I know that for me personally, that he has taken it and changed my heart with it. And there are some things I wouldn't know about God. If he hadn't let me go through those dark places. And so now we can really say like Jesus did when he was being crucified. Father, forgive them. The ones who did it to me, who did it against me. Lord, forgive them because they didn't know. You said, yes, they did know because they did it. No, they, they didn't know who you were. They didn't know who you were. They didn't know who, what God's plan and purpose was for your life. 